important to keep in mind the sacrifices that people made in going, in making the decision to go to court and to fight for justice. Uh, many of them, they would, they were disowned by family. They lost their homes in order to pay for bills. They were forced to come out in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. And you'll notice a quote over here by Michael Hardwick, where he says, in essence, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself if I just walked away. So I think it's important to keep in mind, again, the people who stood up, made the sacrifices, even up to present day. They're important heroes. That's right, and, uh, and it's right, it's such a thrill to have James Obergefell here and others this weekend who have done that work and had the courage to put their lives on the line for this movement. Behind us here, there's a TV wall, and it takes us from Maud and Archie Bunker <laughs> through the, to current sitcoms. Uh, but I think we wouldn't do this to show around. the power of media in changing attitudes. So this is the Ellen, famous Ellen show where she accidentally comes out on a microphone in an airport. <laughs> uh, but I, that was a key moment. Uh, but it walks us through chronologically. We'll watch a, a couple of other of the episodes. This is Will and Grace from 1999 where he comes out to his mom. I kept this from you for a long time, and that is why, because it, it seemed like I'm ashamed of something that I can't I want, I want you to know who I am because I'm proud of who I am. Mom, are you wearing clothes? Jack. <laughs> Mom, I'm dead. And this is a TV commercial from Philadelphia. It was 10 years ago, one of the first times that a, a city marketed itself to the LGBT community. So it's two gay colonialists meeting up for a romantic time in Philadelphia. Philadelphia and its countryside have a long history of making everyone. One of the challenges faced in doing the exhibit within this constitutional frame, we had a desire to show uh, images of trans people and people of color. And within the constitutional frame, those cases haven't made it up to the Supreme Court level, but this is one of the places within the media where we were able to include trans people and people of color's voices. Uh, and it's one of the powerful things about the evolution in media that it's included voices of African American LGBT people, trans people. So we have episodes from Orange is the New Black and, and Empire, for example, where you see this powerful voice of people of color and trans people also becoming part of this movement. So uh, even though we were uh, constrained a bit by this strict constitutional frame, we wanted to make sure to include the voices here. It's very important because when the uh, book uh, Out for Good came out, it was you know a very in-depth history of the movement from Stonewall forward. And I remember I asked Rich Wondell what he thought about it when he read it. No, 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 stop. And he stop. said he felt like it didn't you really come into my house and you insult me and my boyfriend, who, by the way, way is not that dramatic. So after defeat, after defeat, after defeat. And he said the problem is it wasn't including what was happening in the culture, you know, being reflected in film and uh, plays and so forth. That way, it seemed like we were really being beaten down. If you read just the history, the political history, but this other stuff was getting off the baby. Beautiful. So I think it's very important. Her name is Lily. Oh, part of the history is a vibe. Just turn it off. You yeah. can't turn it off. It's who I am. Thank you. So this is Modern Family. We'll just watch one more after this. And uh, this is two lesbians at home and their son treats them somewhat dismissively. It's a real life family. Uh, yeah, so it, feel free to come back and watch more of these. It does go through to the current. Again, it starts with some very funny. I Archie Bunker is still so current for those of you who are all in the family. Uh, but there's a great all in the family episode where uh, Archie confronts me.
and we had saying that homosexuals should be welcomed like everyone else, and they do that in England. And Archie says, England's a fag country. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the magic about that show is that even though it used that homophobic language, the irony was so strong that it really did change a lot of attitudes, uh, whether that was about homosexuality or race or feminism. It was a really key uh, show in changing attitudes. We also are really pleased Mark Siegel got us the script of Philadelphia, which is, of course, a very uh, watershed film about AIDS uh, and an African-American attorney who uh, takes on a case for a white gay man and uh, actually ends up winning in the end. So we have the signed script for Philadelphia. Uh, there's Orange is the New Black, so African-American trans woman. And are you saying that you're going to start dressing up like a lady all And this is Transparent, the latest show dealing with uh, trans family issues. And now we'll walk you over here. Uh, these are places where we could deal with uh, issues. We finished up the exhibit with marriage, so we wanted to make sure that we dealt with the many other discrimination issues that are making their way up in the court. So military uh, is a key one, Dan Choi. Speaking up for the rights of care for your partner, Sharon Kowalski, which was a key case. Uh, so there's an image of Sharon Kowalski with her partner, making sure that you uh, that Sharon was able to get support from her lesbian partner. We also have family issues, a second parent adoption, uh, employment discrimination, confronting employment discrimination, immigration equality, transgender equality. So this is showing how these, uh, as we have the success with marriage, we have all these issues bubbling up in the courts and the activism that goes with them. So we really view this as uh, the important work that's done in the courts, but the community activism that undergirds the change in attitudes. You know, you often hear the courts sort of listening to the attitudes of the American people, where they lay, and, and that does play into how they make their decision. So with all of these issues, we have the community activism that's happening and that's bubbling up in the lower courts. Some of these may make it to the Supreme Court, some of these may be resolved in lower courts, but it really points out that we didn't uh, finish our work last Friday, I'm sure as everyone knows. And there's, a, there's more work to be done on marriage, changing attitudes there and improving our work there, but in all of these other issues. So uh, on, the, on the bottom bar, we also include all the Supreme Court cases, starting with Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, going through the various marriage cases, civil unions, so the evolution from civil unions to marriage, which was a key shift, the impact of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, uh, California Supreme Court weighing in on marriage equality, transgender equality, and then Windsor, which was of course the huge case decided just two years ago prior to Obergefell last Friday. And we will finish up by packing into the little room over to the left with the post-its in it, so uh, please come around. Evan, this is your room. <laughs> Chris, the post it went from a little river into a torrent. This That's week, right. This week. So come on in. Uh, and so this was really our effort to, to get folks coming in to think about marriage equality. You know, one of the cases we've made within the National Constitution Center. I was really hoping that this could be the sort of exhibit that all Americans could come to and that even what I call curious conservatives could come into this exhibit and give them something to think about. So it, in this end piece, we wanted uh, both people in favor of marriage equality and opponents to get to weigh in. So the green post-its are folks in favor and the yellow are opponents. Uh, the yellow are falling. You planned that. <laughs> The same idea, by the way, is down at Martin Luther King. And when you read the things that people have written in the book in his memory, I began crying. And believe me, it was involuntary to realize that some, thing, some of these posters probably say, I finally came to understand why my brother committed suicide. I finally was able to get my parents to reconcile with my sister. There are, so, there are probably things up here that should be collected and published in a book, Mr. Bartlett. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just want to uh, uh, acknowledge Evan Wilson and the many other activists who brought about this and, and brilliantly decades ago recognized that marriage equality 
would have a huge impact on marriage, but would have a huge impact across the board on how, how LGBT citizens were viewed, how family was viewed. Uh, so it, it was a success for marriage and for people who want to get married, but it was a success for all of us. And you really see this in the points of view, like that, that people see the freedom in getting to make decisions about their own lives. And that freedom extends to how they express their partnership, but it also expresses to gender, uh, to participation in various types of political battles. And so, you know, we included in this discussion quotes, and again, you'll see quotes from opponents, but, uh, you know, rapper Jay-Z, what people do in their home, own homes is their business, and you can choose to love whoever you love. It's no different than discriminating against blacks. It's discrimination plain and simple. Or uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu's great quote, I have no doubt in the future the laws that criminalize human love and commitment will look the way that apartheid laws do to us now. So obviously wrong. Uh, so, you know, this is a shift, this shift in attitude, a rapper and a, an Episcopal bishop, you know, these changes happen because of the courage of many of the folks in this room, many of these pioneers, uh, many marriage equality activists who knew how to stake out this territory with vision. Uh, and, and the points of view that they had were not always accepted. So, you know, in, in the, with the annual reminders, people thought those guys were crazy. Many homosexuals thought it was crazy to be that visible. And similarly with marriage equality, Evan Wolfson faced a lot of opponents who fought him, you know, who thought that it was the wrong time to do marriage equality. And he had the vision to say, no, it's the right time. And it's going to lead to something really powerful. So it's one of the things I think about courageous vision, that sometimes you have to go, you have to go with a couple decades or however long to bring people around to the point of view that you have that you've actually had this tremendous success. Uh